In this video, I'll go over what sleep needs are and how they are determined. This is an essential piece of knowledge uh, to possess in order to understand how polyphasic sleep works and why the schedules are as fragile as they are. And I really suggest you keep watching this video so we don't make any fatal mistakes when designing a polyphasic schedule. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of Polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So let me start off by explaining what sleep needs are. Essentially sleep needs are how much sleep you need in order to feel great and that you have without using an alarm on a monophasic schedule. But normal people don't really have the same criteria here as polyphasic people, okay? The situation I just described applies to monophasic people, but it doesn't really do that to polyphasic people because our schedules are able to cut out light sleep a bit. Um, so a polyphasic sleeper uh, determines his sleep needs by taking the duration of slow wave sleep that he needs uh, plus the duration of REM sleep that he needs and then that whole thing is multiplied with the minimum light sleep percentage. The minimum light sleep percentage is still being investigated at this moment, but a safe bet to assume is that it's around 20%. So in order to determine the full sleep needs, you want to take the time you spend in slow wave sleep each night, plus the time you spend in REM sleep each night, and then just multiply that whole thing by around 1.2 for the minimum light sleep percentage. For the remainder of the video, we will however ignore the light sleep percentage because it's going to make everything a bit uh, more of a hassle to explain. So just keep it in mind that it's there, uh, but we will ignore it. We will ignore talking about it for this video, okay? We'll just talk about the vital sleep needs, as in the duration spent in REM sleep and the duration spent in slow wave sleep, okay? In polyphasic adaptations, a key element in making them work is called repartitioning. This is where your body replaces light sleep with vital sleep in order to make sure that it gets the needed amounts uh, that it requires each day, okay? Uh, Repartitioning could also be looked at a specific percentage of light sleep that your body is allowed at the moment. So if you're adapted to Everyman 1 and have 40% light sleep, uh, then your repartitioning would be at 40%, okay? It's very difficult to make this number decrease. In fact, it's the main thing why, poly why polyphasic adaptations last so long, because it's really hard to make that 40% decrease down to 30% or even 35%, you know, even a little bit is hard to make it happen. It takes quite a bit of sleep pressure to do so. But it's very easy to have it go back up again, okay? It only takes a few days of allowing more sleep to make that number jump high up again. I've talked about this in our video on how to handle being sick on a polyphasic schedule. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, I recommend you watch it. Uh, the link to it will be in the description. But back to repartitioning. The percentage of light sleep is pretty rigid. And that's a pretty big flaw here, okay? Because your repartitioning is there in order to suit one specific lifestyle that you have. Uh, lifestyles in this case being a combination of your diet, uh, how often your selves need to repair themselves, or how often you exercise or are sick, and so on. Uh, if you alter your lifestyle, you're suddenly going to require more slow wave sleep, for example, if you start exercising more. Uh, your current sleep repartitioning is probably not going to be able to handle that increased sleep need because it's so stuck on being at that, for example, 40% level that we described earlier. Uh, this is a pretty big issue since you won't be able to, you know, alter your lifestyle that much after you adapt to a polyphasic schedule because it's going to kick you back into another adaptation to make your repartitioning decrease even more, you know, from 40% to 30%, which might just take another month, for example. It's a pretty big threshold to jump to. As I said, your repartitioning is pretty rigid, so if you some days need to exercise more, 
uh, which cause you to have an elevated slow wave sleep need, you can increase your core by a cycle in order to combat this, you know, uh, the light sleep percentage is expected to stay the same, but you will just get more slow wave sleep. But, but this shouldn't be done too often either, because if you do it too many times, you're going to destabilize your whole sleep and you might permanently increase the amount of light sleep that you get, okay? Your repartitioning is specific to one lifestyle that you have. If you suddenly start needing more sleep, you're going to be kicked back into an adaptation, as I already described a bit ago because your body won't be able to sustain the sleep needs that it has now gotten, okay? Your minimum sleep threshold is thus only specific to a certain lifestyle that you have. Say that you need 90 minutes of REM and 120 minutes of slow wave sleep a day. You're not going to be able to adapt to a polyphasic schedule that has a total sleep time of 200 minutes because that's below your sleep threshold, your minimum sleep threshold. So if you really want to adapt to a schedule that has a really low amount of sleep and especially one that has a lower amount of sleep than your sleep needs, uh, you need to figure out a way to reduce your sleep needs to make that happen. Uh, maybe it involves exercising less, uh, in order to reduce your sleep needs. Maybe it involves switching diets so that your cells don't need to repair themselves as often. Something like that. It's certainly not an easy feat, okay? Your best bet is most likely just to accept that you have your own sleep needs and live with a choose schedule that is going to be okay to do with those sleep needs. Let's talk a bit more about how you determine your sleep needs. I mentioned that in monophasic tongue, uh, your sleep needs are going to be how much sleep you need to function without impairments, or you know how much sleep you get when you aren't using any alarms for an extended amount of time. Um, but how does an aspiring polyphasic newbie go about figuring their sleep needs? Well, let me start off by saying that if you are sleep deprived, uh, this number is going to be really inaccurate. So. Make sure that you take a few weeks to recover all your sleep debt in before you start figuring out this number. Um, though this doesn't apply if you've already adapted to a schedule, but if you are in the middle of an adaptation and you know you start feeling like, hey, maybe this isn't going to work out, just hop out from the schedule and recover all your sleep debt, and then you can you know make sure that it's a possible schedule to adapt to. Or hopefully you do, you don't need to do this, but instead you've done this before you start your adaptations. Actually, uh, don't quit your adaptations until you've been on them for at least two months if you feel like this is going to be an issue. You know, The safest bet is probably just going to be to join the Discord and ask the people there what they think about your schedule. You know, explain a bit about yourself as stated in the welcome questions and then, you know, have them take care of you. Don't, don't do any drastic measures here, okay? So, before you start your schedule, you want to recover all your sleep debt in order to figure out how much sleep you really need. I'm going to explain two ways for you to figure out your sleep needs okay, in this video. First, you get yourself an EEG. An EEG is a sleep tracker that monitors your brain waves. And when you sleep without an alarm uh, and wear an EEG, you're going to see exactly how much sleep you're going to need, you know, sleep stage specific stuff. It's really cool. Um, we'll make more detailed videos on the EEGs in the future, so if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do so, so you don't miss when we release those videos. The other way, which is totally free, but also somewhat inaccurate, is to determine just, you know, how long you sleep. Um, you can use an activity tracker and like smartwatch to track you this or just you know look at the clock before you fall asleep and after you fall asleep um, since they have around the same accuracy when you have a number of how long you sleep again without being sleep deprived after having been recovered for a long time this is on a monophasic schedule by the way you then multiply that by around 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 in order to figure out how much vital sleep you need each day because on a monophasic schedule, that's, that's around the number of 
vital sleep that you need. Okay, it's around 40 to 50 percent. Of course, it can fluctuate a bit and, and you want to take that number then and multiply it by 1.2 to figure out your real sleep need as I described earlier, but mm, it's, it's around what most people get. Of course, there are some anomalies here like people who need 70% light sleep, they exist, but, but it's going to be give you a, a rough estimate of how much you need, okay? Yeah, don't take it as a definite statement, treat it as what it is. It's, it's an approximation, okay? Also, another cool fact is that in the 2018 polyphasic survey, it was determined that one person was able to reduce their sleep by 4.5 hours when switching to a polyphasic schedule, while four people were able to reduce their total sleep time by four hours, okay? You can use this as sort of maximum number that you're going to be able to shorten your sleep uh, successfully. We've talked about what your sleep need is and how it relates to your lifestyle, as well as how you figure out your sleep needs. Please tell us in the comments below if you have any questions regarding your sleep needs, and I'll be seeing you in a future video. Remember to nap well, people!